Hey everyone, it's Trish, the purple yarnivore. I am doing, hopefully, a quick video today just to show off some finished objects and some whips. I love to see these kind of videos. They are my favorite, always wondering what people are working on. <laughs> so, I was thinking about doing a couple of tutorials on a couple things that I made because people were in some of the groups that I made were asking me if I had a pattern, um, which I don't, but I'm sure I could write one. I've read enough patterns to understand like the format and I know what like the abbreviations and everything are for so and how to how they write them out. So I think I can make it work. <laughs> I have someone, if I just write out the pattern, they could put it in PDF format for me. And I'll probably, if it looks like it's working good, and um, my pattern testers come out all okay and everything, then the pattern will most likely go in my Etsy shop. Speaking of Etsy, I am very surprised about how well my Sugar Skull stitch markers are selling. I usually just buy um, one order of them and uh, sell them on my Etsy shop, but I think I'm going to have to buy like two or three orders of it at a time. Um, they really are just like the coolest things ever. Um, and then like my owls, my sugar hoots. I showed those, the, the sugar skulls and my sugar hoots in my last video. Um, so those are done. Those are up in my Etsy shop. Um, but let's look at some finished projects I do. These are actually, I'm going to write a pattern for these. Um, one of them is a rectangle poncho. Um, this here is it. It's a really simple poncho. I don't know if you can see it. It's hooded. And um, I made this with coffee shop yarn in the color Sidamo. Now this here is just basically two rectangles sewn together. Originally, I did not add some sewing on the sides like I did here, but when I wore it and I would bend down, this front flap would like drag on the ground. <laughs> so I'm like, maybe if I sew it up the sides, it will not drag so much. So this i love this thing so much this is going to be one of the patterns that i make this is very cozy it's great over a turtleneck or um a long sleeve with some jeans hell yeah i wore this to the store once and someone asked me if i made it they really love it um, so I'm going to be writing a pattern for this hooded poncho. You can see it well enough. Peekaboo. <laughs> and then I created this, um, like, uh, kind of like a, a, a vest, uh, hooded vest sweater thing. And here's the hood. And this is also really good, like, especially like if you work indoors and you get like a slight chill, but wearing like a hooded sweatshirt or a full sleeve um, sweater cardigan gets you like just a little too hot and you just kind of need that middle ground. This is perfect for that. Now, keep in mind, I'm like, 
a 2x so these are made kind this one's made kind of big but this is so easy to make it's quick to work up it's got ribbing around the sleeves i don't know if you can see this is actually like this yarn color is called blue black so yeah and i've got because elephants are like my favorite animal in the entire world <laughs> for many reasons um but i have elephant buttons and i think i got these buttons i want to say in a pack at walmart but yeah i even did ribbing around the hood if you can see i don't know i don't know <laughs> but this thing is so cozy and it would be just it would keep you at the perfect temperature um indoors if you're wearing uh like a long sleeve sweater like this this winter now i live in iowa and let me tell you <laughs> it gets freezing like arctic cold weather we're talking like with the wind chill, it could get even like 50 below zero. Miserable. I am not a winter gal. It's a long story how I ever ended up in this Midwest state. <laughs> but if I had my way, I'd be living in like somewhere in the southern part of the United States or Hawaii. <laughs> If Hawaii was not so expensive, let me tell you, it is cold here. Of course, it's been, the weather's been kind of weird because like one week it snows uh, and then a couple days later it's raining. Now it's like in the 70s, it's like between the 50s and the 70s for like the next week and then it's going to get cold again. <laughs> It's like a weather roller coaster here in Iowa. So those are the things that I have finished. And I have some things that I'm working on also. Now, in my last video, I talked about my friend Christine and how she sent me some yarn. And one of those yarns that she sent me was the Facet Stones. Um, that was in the color... Where did I put it? Here it is. I got to look again. A gate. A gate. And I'll show you again. Oh, these are so pretty. It's got like this clay, orangish, peaches, peachish color with some pink and purple and blues. It is so pretty. Oh my goodness. It is so pretty. Anyway, I put down one project so I could jump on making a project with this yarn. I mean, jump like a kangaroo kind of jump. Oh yeah, right on it. Because I was so curious about how the colors were going to work up. I can't wait. I'm going to make either a cowl or a scarf to go with this hat. Now, I do just a little tiny bit of knitting. I am very much a beginning knitter. So I can make hats and some really basic uh, cowls and scarves. Well, this color right here is working up to look like this. Ah. Uh, isn't that so pretty? Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I cannot wait to wear this on my head. I love, love, love how these colors are working up. They're just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And this yarn is really soft too. 
really soft. Now, one other thing I love to make besides stitch markers is I love to dye my own yarn. I love to dye my own yarn. And I don't ever like really have this big detailed plan when I dye yarn. I have some colors in my head that I wanna work with and how I wanna just kinda of throw it on the yarn. But <laughs> for the most part, I just put it on there and see how it spreads, um, how the colors work up. And I try, I try different methods. Um, I've done the Kool-Aid dyeing. My daughter, she loves to help me with the Kool-Aid dyeing. She likes to sprinkle on the Kool-Aid. And she's actually pretty good at it because let me show you something. I started another knitting hat because I was dying to see how this yarn would work up. Now my daughter dyed this yarn. This I think is, whoa, runaway skein, runaway skein. Send out an alert. <laughs> How dare you? Anyway, so I, I uh, started knitting a hat with the yarn that she dyed because she wanted rainbow colors. And the only color I think that we did not do on here is blue. But this kind of reminds me of circus yarn, the way how the colors are so different and stuff. And look at these colors. They're so vibrant and beautiful. And I actually have two cakes of this. And I started on a knitted hat. And look how those colors are playing out. And so I'm just so very curious how this hat is going to end, but it's going to take me a little bit longer because it's a finer weight yarn. I can put out a knitted hat with chunky yarn, um, oh, like a six weight yarn in just like a couple hours. Um, now this is going to, if I just sat and worked only on this hat, it would probably take me four to six hours. But I just love how it's working up. I really do. And let me tell you, when I do my ribbing, I like to do the two by two. I started out doing the one by one, but I didn't like going back and forth that quickly. And the three by two is like, okay, also. And I think you have to work in sets of five, but I really like the two by two ribbing. I don't know if you can see with all this color. Let me see if it's easier to see on my facets. Because it's chunkier. But let's see. I don't know if you can see it better. But I like the 2x2. Two two. I love the 2x2 two two ribbing. That is just like easier for me. I like how it works up. I like... The look of it, that's just me. Some people prefer their one by ones or their three by twos. Me, I like my two by twos. I like it nice and even. Two, four, six, eight. <laughs> my last whip, my last whip that I am working on right now is a Christmas blanket. And this is like kind of like they just remind me of like really old-fashioned colors and so i wanted to do like kind of an old-fashioned look to my my pat my blanket um so of course i went with the classic granny and um the yarn i'm using for this is the hirschner's puff Holiday Puff Pastry, and the color is traditional. So, yeah, I like 
the traditional colors of this, um, probably something like your grandma might have made or something like that. So I, I'm just about done with this one. And look at that. Look at the colors. Actually, let me fold it in half, I think. Because I'm kind of seeing right through it. And the light that's going through it, I don't know if you can really see it that well. But I'm going to like fold it in half real quick. See if that's a better visual. There we go. Look at that. That is really cool. And I'm, I'm hoping to put a really nice border on it. And I might put it in my Etsy shop or I might keep it. I don't know. I haven't like firmly decided yet. But I really like this yarn. This, I mean, I think some people would compare this to Karen Simply Soft. But the yarn that I think is the closest to this kind of yarn is the, um, what is it? The, the Loops and Threads from Michaels. The, what is it? Soft and Shiny yarn. Or something like that I think the Michaels is closest as far as texture and shine and everything to this I think the Michaels one is a lot closer but that is so pretty isn't it like just kind of like old-fashioned maybe something you'd see um, laying over a, a couch or some of you might say sofa or uh, God, what's another word for it? I forget. <laughs> but yeah, it's so pretty. I really like it. Just that old fashioned color. That's really nice. And I actually have like a hunter green and like a light burgundy reddish color. That I'm going to border this with. And when it's over, when I'm done making it, when it becomes a finished object and not just a whip, I'll show it to you guys again. This is really nice. I'm just psyched for Christmas this year. Even though, you know, we're going through this pandemic and the, the COVID, um, positive COVID numbers are starting to skyrocket again. We're probably going to have shutdowns. Not to be negative, but some countries have already shut down. So, yeah. Um, some governors are talking about shutting down their states and quarantining for a little bit. So, we'll see. We'll see. See, believe it or not, I am a social introvert, which means, like, I'm an introverted person. But I can still be social and friendly. I mean, I probably won't initiate conversations with people I don't know, but um, I could be social and talk and enjoy company as somebody, but when the party's over, I'm feeling like drained and I got to go home and like, like <laughs> de-stress from the experience of socializing, especially parties and stuff. I am like a deer in the headlights at parties. I'm very awkward. <laughs> the nice thing about YouTube videos is you can edit the crap out of them. <laughs> I know one of my subscribers, they're like, said something about, you know, I can't wait to see you in a live video or something. And I'm like, what? <laughs> live? <laughs> the good news is I think... Uh, I was told by somebody I have to have at least a thousand subscribers to be able to go live on my phone without a webcam and I don't have a laptop I don't have a desktop I don't have a webcam so like I'm free I'm free from having to do a live video until I reach a thousand subscribers and right now I have 148 <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't want subscribers. I just, <laughs> I feel like I've been saved for a little bit. <laughs> and if you're, you're a YouTuber and you're an introvert, 
you probably know what I mean. <laughs> um, so yeah, these are my finished objects, my potential written patterns and YouTube tutorials with the hooded short sleeve vest um, and the poncho. And these are so easy. Even a beginner can do these. And I can't wait to um, get a tutorial going. I'm going to write a pattern. I'm gonna send it to a couple people. They're going to test the pattern. One of them's gonna put it in PDF format for me. And there we go, right there in my Etsy shop. But for now, I've got sugar skulls and they go fast so get in there while you can um anyway it's been so much fun i'm already at about 21 minutes now and i promise this was going to be short <laughs> anyway thank you so much for subscribing to my channel it really means a lot that you enjoy it so much um Hopefully, I can bring you some really great content in the future, and I'm so excited to see where everything goes. Is it a nail biter? No? Maybe? <laughs> it's a nail biter for me, but it's an adventure, isn't it? Where am I going to go next? I don't know, but hopefully it'll be fun. Anyway... Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you again. Like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. We'll talk to you later. Bye!